Hello! Once again it's David here from David Savory Electrical Services Limited and today is the second of three videos where I look inside the box. Uh, this time, uh, or last time rather, it was the Fluke Diagnostic Toolbox. Next time it's going to be the Stanley Roller Box, the one with the uh, power tools contained within, but today it's the turn of the primary hand toolbox. Uh, as before, is there anything I'm missing that would make my life out on the road easier? Well, do let me know in the comments below if you spot a must-have that I don't have. So let's start with the case itself. Um, this is a Stanley Top Edge 48cm. There is a bigger model available at 60cm, but I get on just fine with this shorter version. Uh, my first two toolboxes when I started the business were DIY store affairs and each only lasted uh, a couple of years before um, the swinging around on site and bashing about in the back of the van knocked the lumps out of them. Uh, I was concerned that perhaps the Stanley may also not be quite up to the task. This plastic uh, does look like it could shatter if it takes a hard enough whack, but uh, after a couple of years of use I'm happy to report that we're all still in one piece here. Uh, what I do like about this style of toolbox um, is that the, uh, the, the um, top tray can detach entirely leaving an open tote configuration. Okay, this allows me to split down the box in some circumstances so that I'm not lugging about some heavy unnecessaries. It also means that the uh, the tote is normally covered so it doesn't end up full of dust and crap on a first fix site, uh, which can be a problem out there. Uh, okay, right, so let's start with the top tray. I'll remove this for the moment. Oh, feels heavy, I haven't used it for a week because it's the Christmas holidays. It's okay, uh, let's start with this top tray then, and if I pop it open, you can see it has these nice configurable sections. We can take these pieces out here and, uh, and make the sections as we want them. I'm just going to change the camera angle, I think, to, uh, to get a, a better view of it, and we'll uh, have a close look at what sort of stuff we've got in here. Okay, I like a toolbox with the compartmentalised sections because um, it allows me to keep the smaller tools safely stowed away without them getting lost at the bottom of the case. Um, but also uh, it lets me uh, keep the odds and ends, um, the 3.5mm uh, um, bolts, wall plugs, fuses, screws, connectors, all those fiddly little oddments which are useful to have to hand and save time running back and forth to the van every five minutes or filling your pockets with sharp bits that stab you in the scrotum whenever you hoist up your trousers. Uh, okay, so there's a few things here that we can quickly tick off the list because they've been covered in other videos. Uh, let's start with the clamp meter for example. Um, no need to go into great detail on this because I've spoken about this particular climb meter before uh, in my clamp meter video. Uh, all I'll say about it here is uh, it's good to have a decent branded clamp meter and the more functions the merrier. This one does everything I need including capacitance. Uh, the only thing it doesn't have is earth leakage but uh, as shown in the part one video I have another instrument for that in my diagnostic case so it'll put that to one side. Um, similarly the Nipex Ergo strip covered that in my five lesser known tools video uh, as was the joist magnet stuck uh, as it is here um, to my screw case so we can tick them off the list as ones we've wibbled on about before uh, and some fairly basic things here as well that uh, we don't need to go into great depth on safety specs obviously um, folding utility knife that sort of thing we've got electrical tape um, the pencil sharpener because uh, it's always useful to have a pencil. I've got one of these uh, carpenters ones here but uh, Screwfix and um, Ikea are indis <laughs> indispensable um, places for picking up lots of little pencils to stick behind your ear which you then end up losing on site. Uh, so let's have a quick flicker through some of the uh, the other things here. Now this is a um, quite a handy little ratchet screwdriver set. This actually used to belong to the wife 20 years ago and I nicked it from her so you can put your bit in there and it just gives you a, a means to get at a, a screw that's uh, awkward that you perhaps your stubby can't quite get into. Uh, other than that, have you seen these? These are quite good. Uh, I think these were on Dragon's Den or something. Um, these marksman things which allow you to, uh, to mark a hole in a wall by putting it up against the hole and then if you squirt it, well I've got to squirt something on here, you squirt it and it gives you, gives you your, your dot so to speak, for where you need to be doing your drilling. So uh, they're quite good. That doesn't normally live in there. It normally lives on my tool belt, but it's found its way into there. Little battery torch. Uh, lighter, not for the cigarettes. That's actually for working with heat shrink. Speaking of working with heat shrink, I've got this um, this Wolf um, 
gas iron as well. Uh, I, I, they don't seem to make these anymore. Uh, this is rather good though. Uh, I, I do like this one. It allows me to either put a soldering tip end on or as it's got here, just a uh, hot air vent and uh, self-igniting. It's actually got some gas in it, which is unusual. I normally need to charge it when I need to use it. Um, but that allows me to, um, to do soldering or work with heat shrink. Um, quite well. Uh, I've been through a couple of these. Dremel make a very good one called a Versatip. Unfortunately, there's a little part in here, a little catalyst, which uh, traps the gas to get the uh, the temperature up. And uh, once that runs out, they don't sell a replaceable part. And I don't understand why that is, because it's a very good taller one that Dremel makes. But when the catalyst wears out, you're buggered. Um, which is a shame. Uh, and like I said, the Wolf one, they don't seem to make any more, at least I can't find it. I've also had a Gas Cat, Antex Gas Cat 75, but I had problems with that as well after a while. It, uh, it seemed to stop getting up to temperature. Uh, now, in the part one video, uh, we looked at a basic socket tester, but I carry a, a, a one that's a bit more advanced than the main tool case here. This is a TIS 1005, which has a few more whistles and bells. Um, if I just get, get a socket, uh, we can plug it in and have a look. Uh, in the past, where is it? I've got, in the past, I've used the, these Martindale EZ Check Extras. Um, I, I'm, this is the second one I've had. Uh, the first one failed. The second one is also proven problematic, um, which is why it's been retired. If I plug it in, it'll probably work today, but it goes through a little self test there. And then you've got your three flashing green lights for polarity, and it also does a, a loop test. So this is telling me that my loop impedance is, is relatively low, as I would hope. Um, working at the moment, but I've had problems with it on site. I can't remember what the problems were now. It's, it's probably a couple of years since I last used this, so uh, I don't use that anymore. I can't say that I recommend them, but this TIS-1005 isn't too bad. It does a bit more of a comprehensive test than the basic socket tester, plus it gives you that uh, audible feedback. So you get your polarity check there, and then it comes up with a, a good check or urgent check status light for earth fault loop impedance. Um, now, uh, there's no way to tell it what kind of socket circuit you're testing, and it comes from the factory assuming that it's a 32 amp circuit, uh, which is obviously the most common in the UK. So sometimes you see the check LED, uh, LED illuminated um, to say that it's got an appearance higher than 1.1 ohms, which is what you'd expect on a 32 amp circuit. But if it's a 13, 16 or 20 amp circuit, then a higher appearance can be allowed for. So you have to take these status lights, um, you can't take them at face value, you have to take them the pinch of salt. You have to know what, what circuit it is you're testing to know whether these status lights are, are giving you the right information or not. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very interesting. It also has this RCD test inject button here, so it'll inject a uh, 30 milliamp fault current to trip out your RCD, um, just to basically test it mechanically. Um, can't say I use that much, but for basic socket testing, that's, that's not, a bad, not a bad product. Um, pipe cutter for when you're working on your electric showers or whatever, and you're doing your, your plumbing bits, not that there's much of that. Hook. Hopefully, fuse wire. There's a couple of packets of a couple of pieces of fuse wire there, and some fuses. Uh, I really want to tidy this up. I've tidied up the, the bottom part of the box, but this is still full of full of crap. It needs to, a good emptying out. Um, little magnifying glass, uh, an eraser for rubbing out your pencil marks on the wall. A couple of pencil sharpeners and. Um, security bits, various security bits. You know when you get your cooker or your oven or whatever and it's got Torx screws on it, always good to have a, a pack of security bits ready for opening those sort of things up. Uh, laser measure. Uh, they're right, these standard ones. Always complains that the battery is low, <laughs> regardless of what batteries I put in it. It's always moaning that it's low battery, but it does does the job. You point and click, and it tells you what the uh, the distance was. Hopefully, let's point it at something. Point at the wall over there. And there we go. We are 74.2 centimeters away from the wall over there. Um, it will also, if you hold down the on button, will do a tracked measurement, which means as you move it. Not going very well here. We go. As you move it towards or away from the target, it will give you um, a continuous feedback. It does um, volume as well, uh, but obviously I don't use it for anything like that. This is mainly used for when I'm marking out down lights on a wall or something like that. A solder sucker. We're sucking up your solder. Um, and then it's just various screw um, uh, drill bits scissors, glue, etc. in there. There's some ear plugs there. 
a couple of interesting things in here this is actually a um, telephone socket polarity tester uh, most people probably don't know you can get the polarity wrong on a telephone socket not that it usually has uh, much of a knock-on effect but um, back in my comms days years ago when I uh, worked for Mercury Communications we used to have it um, the way some of the telephones used to work were uh, when the polarity was changed on the line it caused the uh, the red LED to shine upon the phone and that was the way that message waiting indicators worked so you'd have a the phone line would be of normal polarity on a PABX and then if someone left you a voicemail the PABX would swap the polarity over and cause the red light to show on the phone of course the knock-on effect was that of that was that if you installed the sockets with the polarity wrong in the first place then you got the message waiting light on when there was no message waiting that's a boring story but this is a polarity checker so you plug it in and it tells you there whether there's line voltage and if you press the button here it'll tell you if there's a dial tone just a basic light indicator indicator and the reverse polarity light will come on here um, if you plug it in and it, the polarity is reversed. That's um, I've had that a long long time now. Um, on all and this, this is a, um, a what do you call them a reamer it's a, a device for um, putting your thread back in for your 3.5 mil bolts. Uh, oh this is interesting this is a VDE um, torque driver, torx driver sorry, um, has it got the size on there? I can't remember what size it is but um, you know when you have a Henley block uh, that your tails go into and you need to uh, to undo the screws in it to or undo the, the grub screws in it to get the uh, the tails out, well that's a VDE um, torx driver that will do that um, which is interesting made by a company called Boddington's. I'll talk about them a bit more uh, in a minute when we look at the, the bottom half of the box. But I mean, I think that covers the kind of the basics. We've got various stickers and labels, um, pens and cable ties and all sorts of stuff that needs to be tidied out of there. But um, that's basically the top of the box. But I find it, like I say, very handy to have something where I can keep all these little odds and ends together. And if I don't need all of this, this weight, if I just need the basic hand tools I can detach this whole thing from the box and just walk around with the tote so uh, let's have a closer look at that tote okay let's talk tote and this is the 48 centimeter box as I say and it's pretty efficiently stocked I don't think I could get much more into it I don't think I'd want to get much more into it without it uh, it would start to become a bit um, a bit too heavy but uh, it's fairly well packed um, it's uh, about at capacity but it's got the all the essentials in uh, generally that I need for doing the job so let's have a, a quick flap through them there's the the fucking useful wire I don't need to talk about that anymore because we covered that in the five lesser known tools video this next thing on top here this is a CK bush wrench that sounds painful doesn't it, it sounds like you've uh, pulled up your flies too quickly and caught yourself short but uh, it is actually for um, tightening up uh, nuts uh, when working with conduit SWA that sort of thing uh, so that's uh, that's useful uh, moving on to snippy and pliery things so you've got a, a 3m1 uh, nipex uh, set of pliers cutters strippers here uh, these are very good uh, i tend to only use the the plier end for them um, but that's uh, one of the one of the things that comes out the box the most as is the ck combi cutter 3 another 3-in-1 tool that supports cutting stripping and also uh, cuts down your m3.5 or 4 mil bolts uh, so that's jolly useful uh, I, I, this is my third set of these. I've uh, I've lost two over the years, uh, including a, a pair just before Christmas. And I've just had a text message on Sunday from the client to say we've just found your cutters outside where they've gone rusty. Oh, thanks very much. Well, I've had to buy new ones now. Uh, a pair of uh, basic pliers as well. These are VDE pliers. I actually found these in a gutter on a site somewhere. So uh, one man's loss is another man's gain. My gain in this case, which is always the way I like a gain to be. Uh, we've got the, the old pry bar there. Uh, there's a, a smaller version of that in there somewhere as well, which I thought I'd lost until I emptied this out the other night to uh, blow the dust out of it, and I found it lurking right at the bottom. So that was uh, that was always uh, that's always a nice find, isn't it? Spirit level. Not much to say about that, except it's essential. Uh, obviously, we've got all the the various sizes of screwdriver in here. Now these barcos I've had since the beginning, and they're they're very good. Um, the, uh, there's one in there that's not a barco, and that's because I lost the barco one. Uh, where is it? Oh, it's right at the bottom, of course. 
This one is a Boddington's. I don't know if you've heard of Boddington's. They're a British tool manufacturer. Uh, and these are quite nice screwdrivers, these Boddington's ones. Uh, if I were to replace my barcos, I think I'd look at them. I was actually asked to write a review for Boddington's tools for um, uh, electrical, electrical Times magazine uh, two or three years ago um, and they gave me a couple of tools to play with. There were some others that I went out and bought so that I uh, had a more of a range to, to actually talk about uh, including that uh, VDE um, Torx driver that we looked at earlier. That was a Boddington's item as well. Uh, so we've got, got, got one of their screwdrivers here and I've also got a pair of cutters. These are good for working uh, on uh, say tails because you've got the, the rounded blade which is good for stripping or, or cutting tails. So that's a Boddington's item as well. Uh, like I say, uh, worth having a look at their website. Um, they're not paying me to say that, but uh, because I have checked their tools out in the past, I, I was quite impressed with them. Unfortunately, nowhere seems to stock them, so you've got to buy them online. But they do support, I believe, things like um, engraving as well. So you can have your, your name sort of laser etched onto the tools, uh, which is a nice touch. Uh, basic wood chisel. Uh, like I say, I won't, won't talk too much about tools other than the fact that um, I've got the VDE screwdrivers in there and Barco and the main range in use. Oh, look, I've got a, a set of little side cutters in there. Oh, I forgot I had. Uh, a Chrome tool, uh, again, um, working with telecoms, this is a, a punch down tool for and terminating your uh, telephony wiring or your Cat5, Cat6 wiring uh, onto your IDC connectors. Also has the little uh, flip out bit there for pulling cables back out again. And you have to remember not to flip that out and then punch down when you hand onto that. Which used to be, uh, again, from my communication days, something that uh, you've got the odd injury with. Uh, I've got one of these things. Uh, can't remember what it's called. Probably should have checked before recording this. Um, what is that called? Anyway, you know what that is. Handy for working out your, your angles and your markings and like a set square. Is it a set square? I, I can't remember, you know. There's a couple of files in here. One's a sort of boxy file and one's a flat file. Uh, again, just for getting rid of the sharp edges on things. Uh, a scutch for bashing into your, your bricks. Oh, there's that little, um, little pry bar. That and the larger pry bar were a set. So there you go. A uh, couple of sizes of adjustable spanner. Um, I, again, I find that um, it's best to have the, the two sizes. This one's good for you, like your your nuts on your floodlights, for example. Whereas this one's good for doing your your 20 mil or 25 mil um, nuts up with electric screwdriver. Quite a good one. This Bosch. This is the Bosch PSR Select and it lets you uh, select which bit you want. You, so I've got a little flat bit there, but if I rotate the uh, thing around, there's a Torx bit there. And um, goodness knows, oh, that's, that's, that's an ejector bit. Let's pop that back in, uh, there's a bigger Torx bit there. Um, you can change the bits that are in there. There's a little uh, Phillips bit there, obviously just forward and reverse, you don't get a lot of, you don't get, the torque on it's not too bad actually, obviously it's no impact driver, um, but when you've got a load of accessories to do upon site, well it certainly takes some of the uh, the action out of uh, doing your wrist in, so easy on the old wanking cramps as they say. I've got um, four stubby screwdrivers here, these are VD stubby screwdrivers, again I got these because I was asked to review them for Electrical Times a year or two ago. Um, and I was sent these as samples. They're made by CK. Um, very good they are too. They come in jolly handy. When you need a stubby, you really need a stubby. You can obviously get the ones with the, the interchangeable bits. Um, the nice thing about these is that they'll generally fit into whatever hole uh, the screw is recessed into. Because you know that not only do you need a stubby on site, but it, that screw is recessed in a way that you can't get to the bloody thing. Solder for the soldering iron. Uh, one of those things, again, whose name escapes me. Um, I actually found this in the garden shed when I had a clear up over the summer. Not a VDE one, but and I'm not using it on anything uh, that's likely to be live. It's more a case for uh, clamping stuff when working with the adjustable spanners. Look at all that burst leaving crap stuff getting lost down the bottom there. Hammer. Another Boddington's tool. This time it's the uh, the strippers. 
the wire strippers uh, adjustable so you can set, set the uh, the size of the wires you're stripping handy for when working uh, especially on things like comms cables um, or some some of the thinner like dc cables if you're working with uh, with small led sets like decking lights that sort of thing scraper for filling up the, uh, the holes i make when i make holes on site ruler and uh, this bit goes with the security bits that we were looking at earlier a couple more things just to quickly mention obviously there's a, there's a tape measure hiding down here a nice uh, eight meter stanley i don't intend to use this one too much i find it a bit, a bit heavy the stanley ones uh, i tend to keep a sort of three meter cheapy thing on my tool belt which is uh, just a bit easier to work with uh, doesn't pull my trousers down so much in here is my laser an imex lx22 um, with the battery compartment open the reason for the battery compartment being open is about three weeks ago i dropped it um, and it, now the button doesn't work to turn it on and off which is a damn shame it did fall from quite a height to be fair um, but there you go it's a cross line laser self-leveling um, the thing to say about lasers when I started off, I started off with a DIY laser, one of these little Bosch Quigo things uh, from home base or whatever. You just can't see the thing. It's it's just not bright enough. Um, you can see on the back of the box there. Uh, if, it, if you're in a room with sunlight, you ain't going to see it. So you need to spend a bit of money on a decent laser. You can see that is a lot brighter, that laser. It's flashing because it's not level, but that's a lot brighter. Also... The Quigo will only give me, uh, it won't give me a line down the ceiling very well, uh, whereas this is much better for giving me spots and lines where I need them. Um, it's just a shame that you now have to take the battery out to turn the damn thing off. Um, but it's also got uh, the attachments that allow it to be fixed to either a um, tripod that I've got with it or to attach it to a um, prop. That's the word I'm looking for. Attach it to a prop uh, to allow you to get the, uh, the height right uh, when you're setting your sockets and switches and of course the way to do that is to get the laser passing through the lugs of the accessories that you're mounting in first fix if the laser passes through all the lugs you know when second fix comes along everything is going to line up final thing to mention quickly is this used to be a uh, do you remember the days of floppy disks uh, well this is a floppy disk case no longer has floppy disks in it it contains all those other bits and bobs that i didn't have room to fit into the top compartment crimps um the uh cable clips uh, seals um brass bolts and nuts all that sort of stuff they all live in there uh, and there's a bit of gaffer tape there uh, and that's about it really so that's the the basic box or oh, one other thing to mention on the back here you see there's a bolt going through here this is a, a little modification of my own on the back i've got a night searcher light hanging off it um, which can clip on and off uh, quite good this light uh, quite bright as you can see if you press the button again or just tap it it goes into a lower brightness and if you tap it again it goes into flash mode um, just for that disco effect and it also has a usb port on the rear uh, for charging your phone uh, and it charges via uh, usb as well so that's quite a handy little thing to have i don't need to carry any power supplies around me i can charge it from like the van cigarette lighter socket or whatever and then i just keep that clipped to the back of the box a uh, little custom modification there, but uh, one that works rather well there you go i hope that wasn't too boring for you so uh sorry if it was a bit rushed today i've got a bit of a new year's hangover uh so i'm gonna go and take that back to bed now it's back to work tomorrow unfortunately so happy new year all the best for 2019 and uh, hopefully i'll have something more interesting for you next time